Cable, aka Nathan Summers, son of Cyclops and Madeline Pryor, had one of the grimmest backstories as far as mutants are concerned. Although he had a successful father who did wonders in the Marvel Universe, Cable himself was forced into many hardships. He was manipulated by Mr. Sinister as a weapon against Apocalypse. Infected with the techno-organic virus, he was sent to a post-apocalyptic future to be saved. Raised as Nathan Dayspring, he became a skilled warrior and tactician destined to kill Apocalypse. Returning to the present, he joined the mutant nation of Krokoa, but later went back to his future to confront his clone Strife. Nathan formed the Six Packs and led the new mutants, transforming them into X-Force. Seeking to improve the future, Cable took on the responsibility of protecting and training the first mutant born after M-Day named Hope Summers. It is said about Cable that he can extinguish an entire star with less than a conscious effort because of his unlimited powers. But how can one man achieve such feats? What is his physiology and how does the techno-organic virus serve as his bane and boon? Well, we will answer all these questions and more. Let's begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. When you pull the trigger. Number 1. Why does Cable's face fluctuate as much as flames? In the ever-changing world of Marvel Comics, Cable's scars have become a topic of confusion and inconsistency. Let alone fans and comic book readers, even the talented artists who bring his character to life seem to maintain inconsistency. It's like they couldn't decide on a consistent story or eye for this rugged and powerful mutant. Initially, Cable sported a single scar over his right eye since everyone was blissfully unaware of the techno-organic virus lurking within his body. Cable was infected with the virus by Apocalypse, after which Cable was in the future to be treated for the virus. His scar was supposed to look like a more recognizable star-like pattern near his right eye because that was the point where the virus struck him first. To add to the artistic chaos, some of these illustrators couldn't quite keep track of which eye the scar belonged to. The scar was meant to grace his right eye, while his left eye was the designated glowy one whenever he flexed his mutant powers. But hey, let's combine the two and make it one eye that glows while the other remains. Well, disappointingly normal. The beauty of artistic license in the Marvel Universe seems to be nothing short of marvelous. Later, Hope Summers swoops in like a heroic plot device and heals Cable's scars by purging the techno-organic virus from his body. However, it seems like the Marvel Universe couldn't let the time-traveling mutant have a pretty face, and those scars reappeared on Cable's face like an unexpected sequel that nobody asked for. Nothing like the good old continuity mix-up. Number 2. Why Cable Needs Deadly Techno-Organic Virus in His Body Before we begin to understand why Cable needs this deadly virus, it is important to understand what it actually is and why it is considered one of the deadliest viruses in the Marvel Universe. The techno-organic virus is a malicious organism that transforms organic matter into walking technology, and what makes it worse is the absolute lack of a cure. However, those who have telekinesis cannot just manipulate objects with the mind, but also check the spread of the virus in the body. It's like having a mental shield against this viral invasion. So if one flexes their psychic muscle enough, they wouldn't need a hazmat suit. But why is this techno-organic virus rather indispensable to Cable? You see, our man Cable has become quite accustomed to the techno-organic virus's presence in his system because this virus has unintentionally played a vital role in keeping his powers in check. Cable has always had to allocate a portion of his formidable abilities to suppress and hold back the techno-organic virus. It's like a constant tug of war within his own body, preventing him from being overwhelmed by his own extraordinary potential. Let me introduce you to Nate Gray, a genetically engineered clone of Cyclops and a clone of Jean Grey. He was as powerful as Cable, but never had the pleasure of hosting the techno-organic virus. Instead, he fully embraced the sheer magnitude of his psionic powers, especially after crossing over to Earth-616. And let me tell you, his power levels were off the charts. Nate, being the Omega-level mutant that he was, possessed a staggering amount of psychic prowess. Some even theorized that he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with heavyweights, like the Phoenix Force. But without the virus reigning in his abilities, Nate's body became a ticking time bomb of psionic energy. Moira McTaggart predicted that Nate wouldn't survive past his 21st birthday unless his powers were somehow tempered. Naturally, Cable did not crumble beneath the force of his own powers because he had to devote a part of his powers to control the virus. This keeps his powers in check and provides an outlet for the excess energy, which in turn saves his life. Number 3. His entire body can be transformed into metal In the third issue of the Avengers X Sanction series, in the far future, Cable saw the world get annihilated after his adopted daughter Hope died. 
Since he could not stop that from happening in that timeline, he has to come to the present day to stop those responsible for Hope's death and the world's fate. Eventually, he picks up beef with the Avengers and kidnaps Captain America, Iron Man, and Red Hulk. Amidst these circumstances, Wolverine and Spider-Man reach Cable's hideout only to find his entire body transformed into metal. Cable looks something like a cross between the Terminator and Colossus, the mutant. Furthermore, his powers seem to have enhanced tremendously, for he was able to take on the combined might of Wolverine and Spider-Man. Hope wanted to reason with her father, but he was beyond all that, and all he wanted was the destruction of the Avengers, people who Cable believed would bring an end to Hope, and in turn, humanity. But Cable's father, Cyclops, arrived at the scene and saved the Avengers. Red Hulk had been infected with a techno-organic virus, but he managed to increase his body temperature to the level of an exploding gamma bomb and managed to burn the virus, much like fever destroys any regular virus. But the techno-organic virus taking over Cable's entire body was deemed to have serious repercussions. He did not have much time to live, after all the virus was lethal. Nevertheless, Wolverine was having a hard time controlling Cable, let alone subduing him. It was only after the freed Avengers joined the fray that Wolverine got a moment to breathe. In the end, Cable collapses, but Hope manages to absorb the virus using the Phoenix Force, thus saving Cable. Number 4. Can Cable be transformed into a giant head? In the epic saga of Cable's life, the techno-organic virus was his arch-nemesis from day one. This guy spent most of his existence in an all-out war against this pesky infection. Cable was then given to Clan Ascani, who treated him and believed he was the prophetic warrior who would slay Apocalypse. In the Earth-X reality, where things get really wild, Cable eventually loses the battle against the techno-organic virus. His entire body got a metal makeover, transforming into a gigantic metal face resting beneath the savage land. However, despite his physical transformation, Cable's mind and some of his powers remained intact. It's like being trapped in a metal shell with a brain that's still firing on whole cylinders. In this alternate reality, Cable's early life pretty much mirrors his Earth-616 counterpart. Born a Cyclops, the X-Men leader, and Madeline Pryor, a clone of the late X-Men, Jean Grey, his origins were already tangled in mutant melodrama. Cable eventually became a trapped giant beneath Magneto's Sentinel City in the Savage Land. But this inconvenient placement actually saved him from a planet-wide catastrophe caused by a psionic wave. This reality's Iron Maiden, Karen, stumbled upon the imprisoned Cable. Iron Maiden wanted to help Cable. He tells her that the vibranium encased Eternal Cersei, with her extraordinary matter rearranging powers, could save him. Computer, body slide to HQ now. <laughs> Number 5. Can he reproduce? In a distant future, approximately 2,000 years from now, Aaliyah Dayspring emerged as a woman with a mission. As a member of the rebellious clan Ascani, she fought against the tyrannical reign of Apocalypse. And it wasn't long before that that Aaliyah found herself entwined in the legend of the Ascani Sun. Love blossomed amidst the chaos when Aaliyah crossed paths with Cable. The two tied the knot, with Aaliyah adopting the name Jen Scott as a tribute to the iconic X-Men, Jean and Scott. Their union bore fruit as Jen Scott gave birth to their son Tyler Dayspring. Raised in the rebel ranks alongside his mother, Tyler joined the Freedom Fighters. But alas, tragedy struck when Strife's forces launched an attack. A bomb detonated and Aaliyah, the fearless warrior, suffered a fatal wound. She breathed her last in Nathan's arms, entrusting him with the care of their son. Tyler was equipped with mutant abilities to project memories along with a side serving of telepathy and telekinesis. Now part of his father's band of fighters, Tyler became entangled in a battle against Strife's army, who ordered his scientist, Frisco, to brainwash Tyler into rejecting his father's beliefs and becoming a pawn in Strife's twisted game. As the clan chosen launched an attack on Strife, Tyler managed to capture a member named Dawn Silk. To gain insider information, he forged a neural link between them, tapping into the clan chosen secrets. But dear old dad wasn't having it. Nathan, in an act of desperation, decided to sever the link by shooting his own son, sacrificing Tyler's mind for the sake of Don Silk's safety. The wounds inflicted on their relationship ran deep, and Tyler never forgave his father for that fateful decision. And doubtful. <laughs> Number 6. Already an Omega-level mutant, Cable has been on a power surge. In the sinister world of Sins of Sinister, things have taken a turn for the worst. Mr. Sinister has corrupted most of the X-Men and their allies, leaving only a brave few to resist his influence. The resurrection protocols meant to restore mutants and the artificial infusion of mutant DNA in humans have become another giant mess, turning any and all subjects into Sinister's pawns. But Storm, one of the more significant mutants, saw through the trap set by the corrupted Quiet Council just in time. With her quick thinking, she managed to escape, and in this chaos, Cable emerges as one of the surviving mutants fighting against Mr. Sinister's grip. His motivations run deep, as Sinister's vile machinations led to the death and corruption of Hope. 
so he's already full of and fueled with the revenge, and he's got the skills and determination to back it up. Having said that, Cable has undergone quite the upgrade. Over the past decade, his techno-organic virus has been completely rewritten by a being named Xylo. Now Cable and Xylo have become one, a singular force with Cable maintaining control. Cable's fusion with Xylo takes his powers to a whole new level. Xylo is no ordinary parasite. It's a sentient insect collective that has been buzzing around for thousands of years. That's a lot of time to accumulate knowledge and elements within its squiggly tendrils. With Cable's sharp mind and Xylo's ancient wisdom, he becomes a walking database. Cable can access any knowledge the Brotherhood needs. He can analyze the situation as it unfolds, feeding his teammates with real-time intel to stay one step ahead of any threat. But that's not all. Xylo, being an ancient mutant, might just grant Cable a longer lifespan than your average superhero. So essentially, by fusing with Xylo, Cable might just unlock his true potential, putting him in the same league as the cosmic powerhouse Silver Surfer. And that would mean some good mutant mayhem. Number 7. The power of his thoughts quite literally bend the laws of physics. In the last issue of The Adventures of Cyclops and Phoenix, Rachel Summers tells a young Nathan, Telepathically, you're strong enough to sense a stray thought a continent away. You could extinguish a star with something less than a conscious effort. In fact, this was when Cable started controlling the techno-organic virus for the very first time. So that's pretty much how powerful Cable's powers really are. Let's dive deeper. This mutant powerhouse has telekinesis that puts Jedi mind tricks to shame. He can move matter with just the power of his thoughts, and we're not talking about about lifting a few measly objects here. Cable can levitate massive weights, and the upper limit of his telekinetic might remain a mystery. Talk about heavy lifting. But that's not all. Cable's got a knack for techno-active manipulation. He can tap into the techno-organic virus coursing through his own biology and manipulate other techno-organic substances. Need to control a fortress made of TO material? Cable's got it covered. He can channel his mind over matter skills to bend that structure to his will. It's like playing with Legos on a cosmic scale. Furthermore, he has an intuitive aptitude. Cable's got an uncanny ability to dissemble and assemble complex devices faster than you could say gizmos and gadgets. He could break down devices to their tiniest components and put them back together with ease. But it doesn't stop there. This mutant maestro can even detect individual oxygen molecules, determine the atomic weight of molecules, and check if a seal is hermetic. Cable's got the power of matter transmutation at his fingertips through which he can alter molecular and subatomic structures like a cosmic alchemist. And if that's not enough, he can disintegrate objects by dissolving their atomic and molecular bonds. Move over, Silver Surfer, because Cable's got the power to make your board disappear. But that's something you don't hear every day. Number 8. He could copy the healing ability of Deadpool. In a wild and body horror filled escapade in the pages of Cable and Deadpool, our dysfunctional duo found themselves in a sticky situation. Infected by the dreaded facade virus, they were fused together, genetically linked like never before. And guess what? Cable scored himself a sweet deal out of this bizarre union. He managed to snag a slice of Deadpool's healing factor without suffering from the whole rotting skin side effect that usually comes with it. That meant less pressure on his other powers, like his telepathy and telekinesis. With his body now able Able to combat the techno-organic virus on its own, Cable had more freedom to unleash the full force of his mutant might. Number 9. Is he immortal? In a dire moment for mutant kind, facing the threat of extinction, the X-Men discovered a glimmer of hope in the form of a newborn mutant named Hope. Recognizing her potential to revitalize their dwindling population, the X-Men entrusted her safety to Cable, who journeyed into the future to raise her under his protection. After years of anticipation, Cable and Hope returned to the present. However, they were met with fierce opposition. Bastion, a powerful super sentinel from the future, was determined to eradicate all mutants and had rallied anti-mutant forces against them. Utilizing an impenetrable energy dome, Bastion trapped the X-Men on their island home of Utopia in a section of San Francisco, cutting off communication with the outside world. Inside the dome, a team of X-Men worked tirelessly to locate the source of the energy, which was revealed to be a temporal portal. To their surprise, the portal unleashed a squadron of deadly mutant-hunting Nimrod Sentinels. Using his time travel technology for one final jump, Cable transported the team to the origin point of the Nimrod Sentinels, a bleak future where mutants were on the brink of extinction. There, Cypher and the team successfully defeated the Master Mold Sentinel Generator, effectively shutting down the Nimrods in the present. As their portal's home began to close, Cable took a leap of faith, risking everything to ensure their salvation. Meanwhile, in the present, the battle-weary X-Men anxiously watched as Cable strained to force himself through the closing portal. Their fate hung in the balance as they awaited the outcome of Cable's desperate act. Despite Thor's relentless efforts, he was unable to breach the energy dome encircling a section of San Francisco. Within the dome, Cable, having succumbed to the techno-organic virus that had plagued him, maintained the time sphere's stability, enabling X-Force and Cypher to traverse it unharmed. However, upon accomplishing their mission, Cable disintegrated, leaving behind only his left arm as a somber reminder of his sacrifice. Figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
nothing I can't. Marvelous verdict. In conclusion, Cable's journey from a manipulated weapon to a formidable warrior and protector has been filled with hardships and sacrifices. His unique physiology intertwined with the techno-organic virus grants him extraordinary powers and presents both challenges and advantages in his quest for a better future. As we delve into Cable's physiology and explore the intricate dynamics of the techno-organic virus within him, we gain a deeper understanding of this complex character and the immense potential he possesses. Through his experiences and relentless determination, Cable exemplifies the resilience of mutants and their unwavering commitment to safeguarding their kind. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. I thought I'd really...